Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. I call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. I'm going to head and call roll. I ask that you identify yourself and just declare that you are here, starting from my right. Jessica. Present. Next. Carlos Marco, present. Anita Chavez, present. Alisa Peña, present. Rosalba Hernandez, present. Celso Gomez Jr., present. And Julian Alvarez, board president, is present. I hereby say that we do have a quorum for tonight. So thank you. I'm now going to ask everyone to stand up as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that everybody face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So now we're going to go ahead and start with agenda item number four. We're going to be doing some recognition. So I asked our PIO director if she could make her way to the podium and recognize those that would be recognized tonight. Good evening, everyone. My name is Blanca Cantu. I'm the Public Relations and Communications Coordinator for La Jolla ISD, and we'll be facilitating our recognition section. Our first recognition is presentation of the United Way Golden Apple Award to La Jolla ISD. Presentation will be done by Mr. Mar Martin Munoz. If I could have two of my board members to the front of the dais, please. Dr. Rosalba and Dr. Carlos Margo, please. Here to the front. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez, Dr. Margo. You may proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Board President, Madam Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, District Administration is, is excited to announce that La Jolla ISD has once again been honored with the United Way Golden Apple Award. Uh, this award is awarded to the top five contributing school districts in South Texas, and it showcases our district's commitment to community well-being and social uh, responsibility. Uh, this achievement is a testament to the exceptional generosity and, and dedication of our staff, reflecting the core values of our district. Uh, we express sincere gratitude to all who have played a vital part in making this achievement possible, reinforcing our commitment to fostering a philanthropic culture within our district. So join me in recognizing uh, Dr. Sorensen, our superintendent of schools, as she receives this Golden Apple Award from the United Way of South Texas. Congratulations, Dr. Sorensen. Our next recognition is recognition of the 2023-2024 La Jolla ISD United Way Pillar Club members and presentation will be done by Mr. Martin Munoz. So District Administration wishes to acknowledge the dedication of our 2023-2024 La Jolla ISD United Way Pillar Club members. Uh, these individuals uh, who gave generously, who generously contributed between $500 and $1,000 to United Way of South Texas, exemplify an outstanding commitment to our community. We extend public recognition uh, to these individuals for cultivating a philanthropic culture within our district reflecting our core values of community engagement and social responsibility. So join me in recognizing the following individuals as they were recognized as Pillar Club members by United Way of South Texas. Uh, we, uh, we would first uh, like to recognize Ms. Leanne Alanis. <laughs> join me, Ms. Alanis, are the following members, Ms. Monica Butler, Ms. Erlinda Camacho, Ms. Claudia Camarillo, Ms. Maria del Rosario Alanis, Mr. Jaime Gaitan, Ms. Virginia Guajardo Chapa, Mr. Joseph E. Kasmersiak, Ms. Cesar Leal, Ms. Rebecca Martinez, Ms. Marta Mesa, Ms. Alejandra Oyervides, Mr. Ivan Silva, Ms. Maria Isabel Uribe, Ms. Daniela Bento, and Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Zamora. Roel and Blanca Estela.
Our next recognition is recognition of La Jolla ISD Campus Crime Stoppers. This, for this recognition, Chief Leonardo Sanchez will be recognizing their students. Good evening, board. Uh, Mr. President Alvarez, Dr. Swanson, uh, Superintendent of Schools, esteemed uh, members of the board and administration and their community. At this time, uh, I'd like to um, honor, it was with a great honor to privilege to introduce you to our La Jolla Independent School District Crime Stoppers student members who received four awards on the, at the uh, 28th Annual Crime Stoppers Conference in Houston, Texas last month. The, uh, the uh, Crime Stoppers consist of nine adult board members and seven students. The awards that they received was best website, best public award po uh, poster, Productivity Award, Most Cases Cleared, and Productivity Award, Greatest Dollar Recovery. Uh, the board members that, that are actually the students that I'd like to introduce is gonna be from different schools. It'd be uh, Medin Garza, 12th grade, La Jolla High School. Neila. <laughs> Neila Morales, 11th grader, Palm View High School. And to highlight Ms. Nayla, she is one out of uh, 12 uh, students that were selected to be an ambassador across the state of Texas through a rigorous uh, selection. And that is Ms. Nayla. Thank you very much. Diego Salazar, 11th grade, what is Lincoln? Kendra Chavez, 11th grade, what is Lincoln? Ariana, Ariana Montoya, 10th grade, Juarez Lincoln. <laughs> Estrella Sanchez, 9th grade, Jimmy Carter, early high, uh, college high school. <laughs> Bruce Morado, 9th grade, Jimmy Carter, early college high school. <laughs> board members, Xochitl Garcia, adult board member from uh, Juarez Lincoln. Norma Garcia, Vice President, JD Middle School. Norma Garcia, uh, I'm sorry, Annabelle Lopez, Secretary, Palm Beach High School. David Asenseno, Treasurer, La Jolla High School. Marisol Garza, Member, JD Middle School. Marilu Tavares, members, uh, member Juarez Lincoln, Ms. Blanca Cantu, Public Information Relations Office, Mr. Victor Garza, the Athletic Director, member, David Torres, member, La Jolla ISD Police Department, and our uh, coordinator, uh, Luis Salinas. I would like to thank our, our La Jolla ISD board, uh, President uh, Alvarez, esteemed board members, uh, Dr. Uh, Swanson, Superintendent of Schools, Administration for continued support for this program. Program. Also, I want to thank Program uh, President Sochi Garcia, Program Coordinator Luis Garcia Salinas, and the rest of the adult and school board in volunteering their time and making a difference in keeping our school safer than by continued success of this program, and thank you very much. Our next recognition is recognition of the district athletic trainers for National Athletic Trainer Recognition Month. This recognition will be conducted by Victor Garza, our athletic director. 
Good evening, uh, Mr. President, Madam Superintendent, Board of Trustees, Administration, community joining us this uh, afternoon, along with people online. Today gives me great um, pleasure to introduce a group of, uh, of our staff members that put in tremendous amount of hours, hours that we really don't even want to count. Why? Because they're here on Saturdays, they're here on Sundays, they're here at midnight. I get phone calls past midnight that I share with our, with our superintendent. Um, the month of March is nationally known as National Athletic Training Month. It is celebrated every year, um, definitely in the month of March. It's celebrated in recognition of the expertise and efforts of athletic trainers across the globe. And it is dedicated to all of those who play a vital role in the development and health care of athletes of various levels. And I'm proud to say that they don't just serve athletes at the Hoya ISD. They serve our fine arts department. They serve our Juliets, our Rubies, our, our dance um, program. They serve our band. They serve, serve ROTC, Kate, and anybody that's within the system of, of our institutions at our high schools and or middle schools. They serve elementary uh, field days. They're there. If I fail to give them a plenty of time, never looked back, never complained, coach, I'm there. They set up cows, whatever we call our, our water stations. And for that, we thank them for all that hard work and dedication that they do. They'll be receiving, they received a plaque and this plaque is some of the words that we, that I got from a few athletes and their plaque reads, La Jolla ISD recognizes their personal name from the high school for your outstanding performance and contributions to the La Jolla High School or La Jolla ISD student athletes. We know that you put in long hours and tireless efforts behind the scenes to keep us healthy and performing at our best. Thank you for being our rock and for always being there to support us through thick and thin. We appreciate you more than words can express. And this are words from our students um, for what they do. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce from La Jolla High School, we have Ms. <coughs> Maria Olga Thompson, better known as Doc Marie. <laughs> Mr. Luis Salgado, Doc Salgado. <laughs> Doc Carlos Presas from Juarez Lincoln High School. Doc Easy Israel Montano from Pavio High School. Doc Edwin Edwin Gomez. Doc Mendoza Ms. Naida Mendoza from Pavio High School. If we have the high school principals present, if you please come down. I know I saw Mr. Joe Pena from What is Lincoln and Mr. Leo Perez from, I mean, uh, Mr. Joe Pena from Palmview and Mr. Uh, Joe Pena from Juarez Lincoln, if you're here, and Mr. Estrada from La Jolla High School, integral part in the support system for athletics and any of the extracurricular. We do thank them uh, along with our board, along with our administration for all the support that they give our, our trainers. Mr. Ricardo Estrada, La Jolla High School Principal, Mr. Joe Peña, Juarez Lincoln Principal, and Mr. Leo Perez, Palmview High School Principal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our next recognition is recognition of the gold ribbon schools from children at risk. And this recognition will be presented by Mr. Martin Munoz. So district administration would like to, uh, to announce that several Ahuayasi campuses have been recognized as gold ribbon schools uh, by children at risk uh, for their performance during the 2022-2023 academic uh, school year. 
uh, Children at Risk is an organization that ranks and grades Texas public schools to help parents, educators, and community members better understand how their local schools are performing. Gold Ribbon Schools are those that have demonstrated exceptional performance in student assessments, despite having high percentages of economically disadvantaged students. So out of the 276 recognized schools statewide, six are from La Jolla ISD. So the recognized schools include Ann Richards Middle School, Memorial Middle School, Irene Garcia Middle School, Benson Elementary, Camarena Elementary, and E.B. Reina Elementary. So this afternoon, we will be recognizing the, the exceptional principals that lead these campuses, starting with Mr. Thomas Ocaña from Ann Richards Middle School. Mr. Danny Villarreal from Memorial Middle School. <laughs> Ms. Melissa Artiaga from Irene Garcia Middle School. <laughs> Ms. Rosa Gonzalez Vela from Benson Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Dulce Diaz from Camarena Elementary. And Ms. Lucy Lara Garza from Ivy Reina Elementary. Our next recognition is recognition of Juarez Lincoln High School band student Ian Campos for being named a 2024 Texas Music Educators Association All-State Musician. This presentation will be done by Mr. Ruben Adame, our Fine Arts Administrator. Good evening, President Alvarez, members of the school board, superintendent of schools, Dr. Marcy Sorensen, central office administrators, and community members in attendance. It is my sincerest privilege to stand before you tonight to recognize several outstanding groups and individual students for high achievement and accomplishments. Famous race car driver Mario Andretti once quoted saying, desire is the key to motivation, but it's determination and commitment to an unrelenting pursuit of your goal and a commitment to excellence that will enable you to attain the success you seek. This quote perfectly exemplifies the students and teachers we are recognizing tonight. We are here to celebrate these outstanding students and their teachers for their recent outstanding accomplishments. Our first two recognitions are two students who earned a chair in the prestigious 2024 Texas Music Educators Association All-State Band, where they performed with the best of the best in San Antonio this past February. Earning a chair in a Texas Music Educators Association All-State Ensemble is the highest honor a Texas music student can receive. 1,830 students are selected through a process that begins with over 70,000 students from across the state vying for this honor to perform in one of 18 ensembles sponsored by the band, orchestra, and vocal divisions. When the audition process is all done, only 2.6% of the 70,000 students in Texas that begin this process are named a TMEA All-State Band member. The first student we are recognizing tonight is John Campos, trombone student in the Juarez Lincoln High School Band. This is the second year in a row John has been named a TMEA All-State Band student. John is here with his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Guadalupe and Isabella Campos, along with his middle school band directors, Oscar Santiago, Oscar Garcia, and his high school band directors, Mrs. Inaia M. Banda and Mr. Josue Rodriguez, along with the principal at Juarez Lincoln High School, Mr. Jose Peña. Please help me congratulate and recognize 2024 TMA All-State Band member, John Campos. Congratulations. 
Our second 2024 TMEA All-State Band student is Juan Hernandez. Juan is a clarinet student in the La Jolla High School Band. Juan is here with his parents, Juan and Ophelia Lucio Hernandez, along with his clarinet teacher, Mrs. Roxanne Lopez, and La Jolla High School principal, Mr. Ricardo Estrada. Please help me congratulate and recognize 2024 TMA All-State Band member, Juan Hernandez. Next, I am excited to announce that all three of our La Jolla ISD High School Mariachi programs received a Division I rating at the 2024 UIL South Texas Zone Mariachi Contest, which is held on January 20th at the, at the Alejandro Alex H. Stein Performing Arts Center. Receiving a Division I at this contest qualified all three of our high school mariachis to advance to the 2024 UIL State Mariachi Festival, which was held in late February in the Seguin Performing Arts Center. All three of these groups have worked extremely hard to represent La Jolla ISD at the UL State Mariachi Festival, in addition on performing at various community events and public shows since November of last year. Please help me recognize and congratulate the following La Jolla ISD High School Mariachis for this outstanding accomplishment. First, representing the La Jolla High School Mariachi Los Coyotes for receiving a Division I rating at the 2024 UIL South Zone Mariachi Contest and advancing to the UIL State Mariachi Festival for the ninth straight year. Woo. Student representatives are Raul Garcia, Sarah Lopez, Dante Ramos, Josue Alvarado, and Osvaldo Galaviz. Mariachi directors, Dr. Martin Cantu, assisted by Dominga Garza and Karina Aldape, and Rogelio Escobedo, and principal at La Jolla High School is Mr. Ricardo Estrada. Next, representing the Palm View High School Mariachi Los Lobos for receiving a Division I rating at the 2024 UIL South Zone Mariachi Contest and advancing to the UIL State Mariachi Festival again for the ninth straight year, and this year receiving a Division I rating at the State Mariachi Festival. Students are Gaela Acevedo, Imelda Avalos, Damien Benavides, Crystal Benitez, Alejandro de Leon, Juan Manuel Elizondo, Sofia Garza, Cristobal Gonzalez, Valeria Gonzalez, Carlos Lopez, Jennifer Lopez, Melanie Morin, Emily Peña, Jovan Rivera, Merari Uribe, Sofia Verrial, and Christian Zapata. Mariachi director is My Myra Garcia, assisted by Ashley Escamilla, and principal at Palmview High School is Mr. Lionel Perez. Smile over here. Three, two, one. And congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Next, representing the Juarez Lincoln High School, Mariachi Sol de Oro for receiving a Division I rating at the 2024 UIL South Zone Mariachi Contest and advancing to the 2024 UIL State Mariachi Festival are Eivin Lara, Alvaro Martinez, Alejandro Rocha, Francisco Hinojosa, 
Diego Martinez, Adolfo Morales, and Esteban Lucio. Mariachi director is Ruben de los Santos, assisted by Daniel Ochoa. Principal at Juarez Lincoln High School is Mr. Jose Peña. Our final recognition tonight was the intent was to recognize the Irene Garcia Middle School Orchestra for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances. Unfortunately, due, their to, due to their directors being out due to FMLA and a death in the family, we will be rescheduling this well-deserved recognition. Thank you very much. Ms. Cantu, do we have any more? Our next recognition is recognition of middle school students that placed and advanced at the 64th Annual RGV Regional Science and Engineering Fair in Brownsville, Texas on February 17th. Presentation will be done by Ms. Maribel Vigil. Esteemed Dr. Sorensen, school board members, educators, proud parents, and of course, our brilliant young scientists. Yes. My, name is, <laughs> my name is Maribel Vigil. I am the science coordinator of middle school education in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction here at La Jolla ISD. Today, we gather to recognize and celebrate the extraordinary achievements of our students who have demonstrated exceptional talent, dedication, and innovation at both the regional and state science fairs. It is with great pleasure and immense pride that we acknowledge their remarkable contributions to the world of science and engineering. Participating in science fairs requires countless hours of research, experimentation, and perseverance. These students have not only met but exceeded expectations, showcasing their passion for discovery and their commitment to pushing the boundaries of knowledge. Through their projects, they have explored the mysteries of the universe, tackled pressing societal issues, and proposed ingenious solutions to complex problems. They have demonstrated creativity, critical thinking, and deep understanding of scientific principles. Beyond their scientific accomplishments, these students embody qualities that inspire us all. They embody curiosity, resilience, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. They remind us that no challenge is too great, no question too daunting, and no dream too ambitious. As we applaud their achievements today, let us also recognize the unwavering support of their teachers, mentors, and families. Behind every successful student stands a network of individuals who have nurtured their talents and encouraged their aspirations. To the students, I say this. You are the future leaders, innovators, and problem solvers of our world. Your passion for science is not only admirable, but essential for shaping a better tomorrow. Continue to explore, to question, and to dream boldly for the journey of discovery has only just begun. Congratulations once again to all the participants that placed at the regional Rio Grande Valley Science and Engineering Fair at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, and that advanced to compete at the State of Texas Science and Engineering Fair at the University of Texas A&M College Station. May your accomplishments today be the foundation for even greater achievements in the future. <coughs> Thank you for inspiring us with your brilliance and for reminding us the boundless possibilities that await when we dare to imagine, to explore, and to discover. Up first, we have Emily Gonzalez. <clears throat> Suleidi Zuniga. <clears throat> Rebecca Diaz. Alyssa Avila, Adriana Juarez, Leilani Galvan, David Mendiola, Aria Gonzalez, Jocelyn Rivera, Milani Cantu, Christopher Martinez, Maleni Ramirez, Leila Gomez, 
Yareli Gonzalez, Samuel Trevino, Dennis Stewart, Dominic Delgado, Isaac Vasquez, Asael Garcia, Alyssa Martinez, Deborah Zarate, Lord Osuna, Giuliani Rios, Mia De La Rosa, Leila Hernandez, Jacqueline Sandoval, Gary Montelongo, Julissa Rodriguez, Giovanni Alvarado Rojas, Madeline Maldonado, Viviana Gonzalez. At the State of Texas Science and Engineering Fair at the University of Texas A&M at College Station, two of our students received special awards from Broadcod Foundation Coding with Commitment Award. This award is for a student who showcased a combination of STEM knowledge with coding in the project's research, design, and development in a project that expresses passion for helping or improving one's community. Maleni Ramirez from Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School under the guidance and mentorship of Ms. Maria Isabel Reina. At State Science Fair, we also received the Lamelson Early Inventor Prize. The Society for Science and the Lamelson Foundation selected and recognized a young inventor who developed a tangible invention addressing a real world challenge to Ms. Jolisa Rodriguez from Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School under the guidance and mentorship of Ms. Maria Isabel Reina. <laughs> Educators, your dedication to our students has been nothing short of exceptional. Your tireless efforts in mentoring them, providing valuable insights, and fostering their curiosity have played a pivotal role in their success. The impact of your mentorship extends far beyond the confines of the classroom, shaping the future of your budding scientists and instilling in them the confidence to pursue their dreams. Your unwavering support has not only empowered our students to excel in the state and regional science fair, but has also equipped them with an invaluable skill and knowledge that will serve them well in their academic and professional endeavors. Ms. Maria Isabel Reina from Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School. Ms. Maria Celia Gonzalez from Dr. Science Middle School. And Mr. Juan Mendez from JD Salinas. If we have any of our middle school principals present that would like to join the picture, we invite you to join us at this time. as well as our Executive Director for Middle Schools, Mr. Rolando Rios. Our next recognition is recognition of Juarez Lincoln High School UIL Robotics students for winning the silver medal at the UIL State Robotics Meet in Belton, Texas on March 21st, 2024. 
Presentation will be done by our UIL director, Mr. Abel Zamora. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board, Dr. Sorensen, assistant superintendents, and members of the school uh, community. Today we gather to honor the outstanding achievements of the Juarez Lincoln Robotics Team. With a remarkable record of six and one as they entered the finals, uh, Juarez Lincoln Robotics Team clinched second place at the first Tech Challenge UIL State Meet in Belton last week. Prior to their impressive showing at the state level, the Juarez Lincoln Robotics Team showed their dominance by claiming the top spot at the FTC regional meets. This victory served as a springboard for their journey to the state finals, highlighting their status as formidable contenders in the realm of robotic competition. Tonight, as we, um, as we commend their outstanding accomplishments, let us celebrate the team's unwavering commitment to excellence and their role as ambassadors of innovation within our school community and beyond. Team members include Gabriela Acosta, Jesus Hernandez, Cassandra Maldonado, Gerardo Banuelos, Luis Hernandez, Javier Gonzalez, Christopher Ramos. Their sponsor, Mr. Daniel Villanueva and Ms. Reyes. Um, their PTEC director is also joining them, Ms. Dr. Sa uh, Santos Palomo and Mr. Uh, Joe Peña, principal from What is Lincoln High School. Congratulations to all of our students tonight, all of our staff for earning these recognitions. I know they worked really hard. So congratulations once again. Thanks for the support of all the principals and all the staff, all of the board members. Thank you so much. Board President, this concludes our recognitions for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cantu. Uh, does anybody on the board want to say anything regarding some of the recognitions that were made tonight? Mr. Gomez, do you have anything to say? Which on the spot. I want to congratulate all the kids that competed for the fair. Uh, very exciting to see my daughter do a great job. So, um, and all the kids as well. Thank you. Thank you, board member. <laughs> Anyone else like to take this opportunity, Carlos, Dr. Carlos Marco? I know you were very instrumental in the robotics, uh, South Texas College being very involved in it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, I would like to congratulate everybody, not just the students, but everybody involved, the sponsors, the educators and uh, the administrators, because I know it takes a lot of time to, for these extra uh, curricular activities. It takes a lot of time for away from family, but it is worth it at the end. I know when we're talking about the presentation regarding the scientists, uh, it really hit home because that is exactly who they are. These middle school students are the future scientists. And um, that's, what, that's the idea, to start them young, to start as early as you can, because what La Jolla ISD is doing is, is unlike a lot of school districts, because you're doing a lot of what uh, other people are doing at a much older age with these youngsters. So I congratulate everybody involved and uh, it gave me great pleasure to see a lot of these awards. Thank you. Good job. Does anybody else have anything to say? I, I will tell you that um, I am on the state board for uh, FIRST Robotics. So I was at the competition in Mission and it was great to see that of the top three teams, we had two of them representing this great city of La Jolla and the school district. So I was real proud to see that. So I want to congratulate all those involved. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all the parents and everyone that's here tonight uh, for acknowledging the great students and, of course, this great district that we're in. So thank you for that. Yes.
Our next uh, agenda item is going to be agenda item number five, and its next item in the agenda is public comment. Each speaker, just a reminder, will be given three minutes to speak. Do we have any registered or individuals that have registered for public comment today? And so just for, for everyone to know, we do have our uh, vice president that will be taking time, three minutes, and she will let you know when your time is up. And then, of course, our secretary, Ms. Pena, will be calling those that have signed up for public comment. We have a total of eight um, public comments for tonight, and we will start with uh, Mr. Leonel Contreras. Good evening, uh, Superintendent, Dr. Sorensen, and board members, board members. I'm currently a student at Wallace Lincoln High School, and I come to express a concern about the welding teacher. I've learned from him when I was in ninth grade this year. I'm in 11th grade and he hasn't taught me anything. I've so taught myself mostly via TikTok and YouTube videos during this class. The welding teacher spends most of his time on the phone or talking to the construction teacher. Before spring break, both of them would frequently barbecue along with an administrator instead of teaching us. When I go to class, most of the students are on their phones and the others are outside in the shop messing around. He doesn't give us any instruction, nor does he, does he give us any lessons slash tips on how to work. He, he, we have access to high-end equipment that we never get to use, of which he doesn't allow us to. Not that long ago, I had requested to use a MIG welding machine, and he declined with attitude. He has also declined to provide us with supplies for us to weld on. We have not done any projects in this class. He only allowed us to, to do, he also to work on projects that I assume are for his personal use, such as a barbecue pit trailer. As a student, I am in favor of the process 2024-2025 school calendar to receive remedial time for the loss of my welding education. I want to make it clear that according to FNG local policy, it states neither the board nor any district employee shall unlawfully retaliate against me or my parent for bringing these concerns to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to direct uh, Mr. Flores in the back to talk to this young man. Thank you. Next, we have um, Veronica Contreras. Yes. Um, I am sorry, I get a little bit nervous and a little bit sentimental. I'm a parent of my son, um, Leonel Contreras, and I'm here to support um, what uh, he just talked about. You know, uh, this teacher is um, not giving them any projects, not keeping them busy. Um, obviously, I'm assuming he has a, a salary getting paid for what he's supposed to be do, doing, right? And I would love to see my son or any other um, uh, parent be um, orgulloso, like I'm proud of their kids about getting state recognitions or going to competitions or getting involved with, with um, uh, extra work, you know, getting, um, getting things done. I am a single parent. I have to work double the time to support my family. And I always prioritize my son. Your education comes first, no matter what. You know, if I could do it and pull it through and make myself a career being a single mom, having to work and go to school and still support you guys because I don't live off the government. You know, I don't go and ask for food stamps. I support my kids. You know, I want you to do the same. I want you to get prepared and be ready for when it's your turn. So I appreciate the school board, um, and the, the La Jolla Independent School District for having all these um, uh, things that I didn't get to have when I was in school, you know, that you're preparing our kids 
for the near future, you know? And, but I'm here to speak up, you know, as a parent, how come there wasn't any welding or construction recognitions right now? Um, automotive, what happened to those kids? Where are those kids? What are they doing? They're skipping class. They're being on their phone, losing their time when they're supposed to get educated. What is up with this? I'm here just to let you guys know this is my priority for me and for many other parents, you know, for their kids to get educated. I would hate for my son to go to the streets and find that um, bad stuff that's out there, you know, to, because they don't have anything else to um, put their minds to, you know, and that's all I had to say. You know, I just here to support my son and, and I want you guys to do something about it, you know? And if it's having to put my face up here, I don't care. I want my son to be ready when he gets that certificate that he is able to, to produce, you know, and be ready because I'm not gonna last him forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Mr. Flores is in the back. He's our director of CTE. Please see him and talk to him, and he can also assist. Thank you, ma'am. Next, we have Christian Garza. Good afternoon, superintendents and board members. I am a student from Juarez Lincoln. I am here to talk about my construction teacher and the lack of education I am receiving. I walk in class and we are all doing nothing. And the and the teacher and the teacher will be outside barbecuing with the welding teacher or on his phone. We hardly go to the shop. And the only time we go is just to clean it. And like today, we were all doing nothing at all. Then he assigned an assignment only because a administrator was going to walk in. Thank you. Thank you. Same thing. Please direct him back there. Next, we have Crystal Garza. Good evening, Mr. President, and Madam Sorensen, and school board members. As a concerned parent, I want to bring up, bring up an important issue regarding my son's education. He is currently enrolled in CTE classes and feels that his time is being wasted. He could have learned new skills if the teacher had provided him with the relevant training skills that he needs to prepare for a career after graduation. I am concerned about why students in other districts and other schools within the district are more advanced while our students are not receiving the career opportunities to advance. As a result, some students' self-esteem is shattered and they do not feel challenged, challenged or motivated to learn. I do not want my son to have a free period. He is eager to learn and looks forward to pursuing a career in this field. La Jolla ISD offers great opportunities for our students, but unfortunately the teacher does not seem to care enough to provide my son with the necessary training. Is the teacher even qualified to teach that class? And if so, why is he not doing so? For some students, CTE classes serve as an outlet and a chance to distract themselves from difficult situations they might face outside of school. This to them is the perfect outlet. I support the 24-25 district calendar. If my son's teacher effectively provides him with the necessary skills to future his career, I am requesting that neither the board nor any district employee shall unlawfully retaliate against my child or me for addressing this concerned local policy, FNG. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Please direct her in the back. <clears throat> Next we'll have Victor Hernandez.
Good evening, Superintendent Dr. Sorenzo um, and board members. Uh, good evening, Superintendent Dr. Sorenzo and board members. I'm currently a student at Juarez Lincoln High School. I come to you to express about the teacher of construction. I'm disappointed and worried about my education because my construction teacher leaves us with no instruction supervision. I decided to join construction to have experience and be able to learn and try to get my certificate for construction. Every morning when I get to play, it's always the same routine. He stays outside having a conversation with the welding teacher for about 10 to 15 minutes. They also turn on the, the grill to barbecue instead of teaching us about construction. These teachers get together to barbecue and eat several days during the week along with a, an administrator. All of them continue to do this. Half of the class is asleep and the, and the rest with their phones for two periods. If an administrator comes, comes in to the classroom, he takes us to the shop and acts as if we were doing a project, but in reality, we're not doing anything. Around February, I made a small cabin. I asked for help. He said he was going to help me later, but instead he lied. My only option was to watch a YouTube video and to complete my project. I fear for my safety because he doesn't know how to use the, mas the machine correctly. One of the students was using the sanding machine and the sandpaper from the machine tore apart and for his safety, he asked him for help, but the construction teacher was clue clueless, moving stuff around the machine. I helped him, but since he saw I was fixing it, he said I could handle it and went back to his office. In conclusions, I do not want any staff members to be against me for speaking for myself, which are my rights as a student. According to FNG local policy, it states ne neither the board nor any district employee shall un unlawfully re retaliate against my against any students of, or parent of bringing a concern of complaint. I, could, I would like for this teacher to be changed for the reason that I want no instruction and he is always in his own personal stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll have Gabriel Castañeda. Good evening, Mr. President, Madam uh, Sorsen, school board members. The construction teacher doesn't do anything at all. The only time he does is when a principal or administrator comes and checks in. But everything else is we just be sitting down in class doing nothing at all. We rarely go to the shop to do stuff. We, and he mainly does his eating, being on his phone, or talking to other, the other teachers, like the welding teacher and the automotive teacher. I mainly wasted almost a year of construction class by not learning or doing anything at all. He takes us to the shop just to clean it. He doesn't even let us use the restroom. The only time we could use the restroom is we have to walk all the way back to the underside of the, of the school area. He also barbecues with the welding teacher, auto collision, auto tech, and an, and an administrator. I'm requesting that neither the board nor any district employee retaliate against me as a student. Thank you. Now we'll have Erica Mata. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. President, Madam Superintendent and esteemed board members. My name is Erica Mata and I am the parent whose son is an 11th grader at Juarez Lincoln. I have voiced concerns to administrators participated in parent meetings, filed a parent grievance. Now I want to bring these concerns to attention and hope to see the necessary actions taken. Other students who are present here tonight are also experiencing the same issues as my son in their CT classes. I am grateful and content that we made the right decision to bring my son back to La Jolla ISD. He has made significant improvements in a 180 degree successful turnaround. Previously, he left his instruction teacher and the previous school district which I provide 
a folder for each to see the evidence. He often came home with projects he created in that class and was recognized in the district's Facebook page because this class had worked on projects for the entire school district. His construction teacher taught him trade skills. However, I do not know this new construction teacher at Juarez Lincoln personally, but I will refer to him as Teacher C. Therefore, the students' testimonies indicate that Teacher C has been unable to provide them with a coherent and rigorous content to help them attain a certification and career opportunities. It is crucial for students to be prepared by the, for the workforce by introducing them to the street skill that provides them with the learning experiences they can use in their future careers. This is especially important in their CTE class. At La Jolla ISD, the PBIS expectations for staff clearly states under being responsible teacher to be prepared to teach engaging lessons, know how to work with all your students, especially SPED and ELLs. Teach behavior expectations to all students and reinforce throughout the year. For teachers to be respectful, to get to know all your students, build a positive environment, be energetic and enthusiastic about their jobs, be a positive role model to model the cell phone use. When looking at these expectations, Teacher C has failed to comply with these PBIS expectations. Mr. President, you made it very clear at the first board meeting that you are committed to focusing on students' outcomes and giving our students the tools they need to have a successful future. I heard the board members and Dr. Sorensen say they want to ensure that La Jolla ISD resources go towards the success of our students, prioritize students' academics, and advocate fiercely for stu stri students striving for excellence. Mr. President, you advocate for students for the students' well-being so they can be college and career ready and have students' outcomes progress. You also awarded the JET grant to the CTA programs here at La Jolla ISD and state-of-the-art welding program, the first of its kind around the state. You stated you were very excited about this grant given to our district. However, you will be saddened and disappointed to hear that tools in some CTE classes are purely decorative. I have no family or political affiliation with anybody and I am the single person in my family employed in the district. I have been threatened and told by some current central office assistant superintendents while they were under the management of the previous board that I have a bad reputation for speaking up. And this is an injustice for the education of our kids. Now we have a new board and a new superintendent and a TA takeover. I'm bringing this issue to your attention because following the protocol would only be the case. But your three minutes have uh, expired. Thank you. Thank you. You have your evidence. Thank you. Ma'am, they'll direct you back to the CTE director. Thank you. I want to thank all of those that provided public comment tonight. We have one more. We have one oh, more. We one more? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ms. Brenda Lee Salinas. Sorry, Secretary Pena. Ooh. Okay. Three minutes, right? Thank you. Let me just. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Sorensen, school board members and community members present and viewing from home. I'm a proud, I'm the proud president of La Jolla FT, and I'm here tonight to address and also to report on the recent, recent teacher, staff, and town hall meetings. Uh, that were held, and it was an honor, privilege to be there, and to also address the April 1st Mental Health Day. I would like to also commend Dr. Sorensen for organizing highly informative, a highly informative and engaging meetings with staff and uh, parents. Excuse me. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. Now, the proposed 24-25 district calendar allows staff to work an additional 20 days. Parents can choose whether or not they want their child or children to receive remedial and enrichment programs that are fun, engaging, and effective during these additional days. This proposal aims to allow all students to attend summer school for academic support, regardless of whether they're in a bilingual program or migrant students. Staff who have never been given the opportunity to work summer school due to political affiliation or other reasons 
now have the opportunity to opt in or out or um, in working these 20 additional days during the summer. So that's a win-win, you know, for all staffs throughout the district. Now, um, our members and community have also expressed during these meetings and they voiced the high stress, not only on teach, teachers, but also as students, that if this district, district uh, proposed district calendar is passed, the 24-25, you know, um, they want to feel stress-free. Why? Because there are too many platforms, extracurricular activities, redundant paperwork, as well as homework, and poor cultural autonomy throughout the, our district that have overwhelmed both our teachers, our staff, and students, and parents as well. Now, to mov motivate the staff to work those additional days, I know that Dr. Sorensen and all of you are going to make it very, a very productive, effective program for all students and our parents, as well as teachers and our community. So if this, is, this proposal, the calendar, the 24 to 25, is approved tonight, it will be a great opportunity, not only to generate $3 million, but to put back into the classrooms and offer great opportunities for student success. And another note, and uh, can you please? La Jolla 30, you have 15 seconds. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Uh, La Jolla Tea raised concerns about the November 17th Mental Health Day to the previous school board members and administration. We informed them that our already employees were experiencing additional stress as they struggled to rearrange their schedules due to work and personal life balance. They were adding more stress to their already high stress level to make up hours in a short period of time. So that packet is going to go ahead and tell you as far as what we are asking. Your time is up. Thank and you. Thank you. Have a amazing, blessed, and happy Easter. And let me just go ahead and add this. The La Jolla Tea family want, likes to thank Dr. Sorsen and the board for the hope that you have given to our teachers, staff, and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who provided public comment tonight. Um, Appreciate that, and thank you again. Thank you. Next on the agenda is agenda item number six, which is our public hearing. At this time, we will have an open, we will open this to the public hearing of 2022-2023 Texas Academic Performance Report, better known as TAPR. The time is 7.03. Dr. Sorensen, would you like to produce, yes. introduce our so speaker? Yes, so I would like to introduce um, Mr. Munoz and Mr. Duque. Um, these are two individuals that have been working very hard with me to put together a mandatory presentation, but also a meaningful presentation around student outcomes. One of our main um, items that we as a board need to stay focused on is student outcomes. And so I would like to um, turn it over lovingly um, to our staff who has worked very hard on this presentation to make it both meaningful and engaging and informative for our community. So thank you both and there you go. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. Good evening, Mr. Board President Julian Alvarez, Board of Trustees, uh, Madam Superintendent, Dr. Sorensen, Administration, La Jolla SE Community. Tonight we'll be sharing with you the 2023 Texas Academic Performance Reports as required by Texas Education Code. Statute mandates the disclosure of our accountability ratings for the, for the year 2023. However, due to ongoing litigation, the release of these ratings has been postponed, prompting a closer examination of the circumstances leading to this delay. The STAR assessment has undergone several modifications since its inception, with most significant changes occurring in 2023. The introduction of new item types in that year resulted in anticipated score fluctuations often leading to lower scores. District and campus leadership, while discontent with this prospect, focused their efforts on preparing for STAR 2.0, the redesign. However, the landscape shifted during the school year, more specifically January and February of 2023, when the Texas Education Agency announced substantial alterations to the accountability system. In essence, 
the state moved the finish line further. The most noteworthy change was increased difficulty in attaining the coveted A rating as a district and as a campus. Dissatisfaction with this decision prompted over 100 <coughs> districts to, to unite and file a lawsuit against Commissioner Morat and the Texas Education Agency. Their, their argument is straightforward. While accepting changes to either the accountability system or the test itself is permissible, altering both simultaneously is not. The collective legal action seeks to challenge the modification of either the assessment or the rating determination process, emphasizing a preference for changes in one area without impacting the other. As of now, certain uncertainty looms regarding the timing and certainty of receiving accountability ratings for the current school year. The components of our annual report include different categories, accreditation, the Texas uh, Accountability Performance Reports Performance Report, PEAMS Financial Reporting, Campus Performance Objectives, which is our goals, violent or criminal incident <coughs> reports, and our post-secondary performance. Each slide will contain one of these small icons to make it easier for our board and our community to follow along the presentation. Our district accreditation status. For the 22-23 school year, we are an accredited school district. Our financial integrity rating system has a financial rating of La Jolla ISD, a superior rating, an A rating. At present, La Jolla, along with all districts across Texas, has not yet received its official rating from the Texas Education Agency. We are neither an A, B, C, or D, or F district. Right now, we are just a not rated district alongside all of the districts in the state of Texas. It's not just La Jolla. <coughs> Our special education determination status meets requirement. Overall, Texas results-driven accountability plays a crucial role in accessing and improving the performance of public schools across the state with the focus on student outcomes, equity, and continuous improvement. Each district is assigned one of four determination levels. <coughs> needs substantial intervention, needs intervention, needs assistance, or meets requirements. La Jolla ISD has been assigned a meets requirement determination level. This indicates that at La Jolla ISD <coughs> is fulfilling the educational standards established by the Texas Education Agency. This also signifies that the district is meeting the fundamental criteria for educational quality, which is a positive indicator of our alignment with state standards. This is also an improvement from last year's designation of needs assistance. So as a whole, we have improved our special ed program. We're gonna dive into our taper report. Our taper report um, is published district-wide and is also accessible through the TEA website. A report is created for each campus and a district as a whole. The report includes star performance, progress, participation, attendance, graduation and dropout rates, CCMR or college, career and military readiness and other post-secondary indicators alongside student demographic information, staff information including demographics and PEAMS financial standard reports. The star performance section presents results from the state testing platform program, detailing performance by grade, subject, and performance levels for students within the accountability subset. Conversely, STAR Performance All Students section encompasses all tested students. Irrespective of subset inclusion, these tests gauge students' grasp of grade level content and their readiness for progression to the next level. Before we begin with the actual data, I wanted to give you kind of an understanding of how students are graded once they are administered a star assessment. So there is four different performance level descriptors. There is a master's grade level descriptor. The master's grade level descriptor, students can excel in the next grade course. So any student that performs at master's grade level is guaranteed to be able to excel in the next school year in the next grade level. Meets grade level uh, proficiency, students poised for success in the next grade course possibly needing brief academic support. They exhibit critical thinking, applying skills, mainly in familiar context. I would like for the board to recognize that the meets grade level performance is the same as on grade level performance. 
Moving forward, approach is grade level. These are students that are likely to succeed with targeted intervention, demonstrating application of knowledge and skills, mainly in familiar contexts. While approaches is not on grade level of, uh, performance, the state gives us credit for these students having reached this performance level descriptor. And so they are considered what we call passers. And then we have our fourth uh, grade level performance, which is our did not meet grade level, which indicates that students are unlikely to succeed in the next grade course without significant <coughs> ongoing academic support. They lack sufficient understanding of assessed knowledge and skills. As you look, uh, as we progress through this presentation, I'd like for you all to look at where we are in terms of approaches grade level, because we'll take those points any day of the week. Our true goal is to get our kids to the meets grade level performance, because that is on grade level performance. The ultimate goal is to have as many kids as possible performing at the master's grade level performance. We're gonna review our star performance in RLA. Please take note that in this first slide for academic performance of the state standard. In Texas accountability, the state standard isn't an official goal. It is just the most efficient way for a campus to earn an A rating in the student achievement domain. Setting the goals at 90% approaches, 60% meets, 30% masters would be equivalent to a campus achieving an A rating in the student achievement domain. In general, the, the district's performance in reading language arts has shown improvement from 2022 to 2023. Keep in mind that we went through a complete star redesign. So it's two different tests. There's a different RLA test in 2022 and a different RLA test in 2023. Okay. We did show improvement at both the approaches and meets level with 4% increase. While these increases are a positive move in the right direction, it's worth noting that the district remains slightly below the performance levels of the region and the state. We should also note that there was a 1% decrease performance at the master's level during the same period. This suggests that although uh, the overall performance improved, there was a slight decline in the number of students achieving mastery level skills in reading and language arts. When analyzing trend data, it is crucial to recognize that the testing of students in Spanish during fifth grade has marginally hindered our sixth grade RLA performance. This is primarily because the assessment is only administered in English in sixth grade. By and large, our district is losing ground at the master's performance grade level um, because of this. So our goal is to hopefully transition our students from Spanish to English assessments probably a little bit sooner rather than later. As you can see, in our district, we've made significant strides in improving that second language acquisition. However, when compared to the region and state standards, it's clear that there's more work that needs to be done to transition smoothly to full English instruction within a reasonable time frame. Overall, the district has improved in math performance from the 22-23 school year with a 4% increase at the approaches and meets level. Despite these minor gains, the district maintains competitive comp competitiveness compared to the region and state. However, there was a 2% decrease in performance at the master's level, sig signaling a slight decline in mastery level skills in math. When we look at science, the district saw an improvement from science from the 22-23 school year with a 2% increase at the approaches level and a 1% increase at the meets level. However, performance remains slightly below regional and state levels across all performance levels. Notably, there was a 2% decrease in performance at the master's level during this period. The district performance in social studies has improved from 2022 to 2023 with a 2% increase in performance at the approaches level and a 1% increase at the meets level. It's important to acknowledge that the district remains slightly below all performance levels as compared to both the region and the state. Please note that students with significant cognitive disabilities take an alternate version of the STAR assessment. Participation rates for this group are shown below in the slide. As you can see, in terms of participation with our uh, students with most significant cognitive disabilities were in line with the region and state as far as performance numbers go. Okay, 
Uh, these students' results are aggregated along with all other STAR results, and they are factored into the campus's accountability at the end of the school year. We're going to take a deeper dive into end of course. Our three comprehensive high schools combined represent almost 43% of the district's final accountability rating. They have a very heavy weight in terms of academic accountability for the school district. The school district itself is not rated as an independent <coughs> high school. We are just a proportional weight of every campus's performance. So when we're looking at uh, English one end of course, the key points is that performance increased as a district from 22 to 23. However, we continue to trail behind both the region and the state. English two performance also increased from 22 to 23. However, we still continue to trail the region and the state. As far as algebra one uh, performance, again, performance did increase as well from 22 to 23. In this area, we're persisting and trailing behind the region while closing the gap with the state. Performance for biology and of course has improved. Uh, we are maintaining consistency with the region and state at the approaches grade level, but facing challenges in keeping up with the meets and masters performance as compared to the region and the state. Lastly, with um, social studies or US history and of course, there's notable increases across all three performance levels at the approaches meets and masters for the district. However, we are encountering challenges in keeping with uh, keeping pace across all three performance levels uh, with in comparison to the region and the state. House Bill 3 is designed to enhance star performance and college and career military readiness. Performance by providing increased funding and resources um, for public education in Texas. It focuses on improving student outcomes and standardized testing and preparing students for success beyond graduation, including the workforce uh, readiness and college readiness. The Hoy ISD can benefit from HB3's provisions aimed at boosting STAR and CCMR performance, ensuring students are better equipped for their future endeavors. As a district, we do have House Bill 3 goals. Uh, specifically, at the STAR level, we're looking at third grade math and third grade reading. What you see on your screens is our third grade reading uh, performance. Our 2023 House Bill 3 goal was 47% of our students at the meets level. Although our district surpassed our board adopted goal, we did fall below the region and state by one percentage point. So it should be noted that our third grade students in RLA did meet their goal, but we're still trailing the region and the state. In terms of third grade math, uh, we did not achieve our third grade math goal of 48%. Uh, despite not meeting the House Bill 3 goal, our third grade students outperformed both the region and the state. So it should be noted that we are outperforming at this point in this grade level, which is a crucial grade level. In terms of CCMR, uh, this data reflects performance of La Jolla ISD's class of 2022 graduates. In Texas accountability, we often refer to a concept known as lagging data. This term describes information or statistics that are delayed or outdated compared to the current situation, often reflecting past events uh, or trends rather than offering real-time insights. Lagging data may not accurately portray the current state of affairs or provide timely information for decisions. In terms of La Jolla ISD and CCMR, La Jolla ISD remains a leader in college career and military readiness, consistently meeting and surpassing their CCMR goal. The district has outperformed both the region and the state in CCMR attainment, exceed, exceeding the state performance by over 20%. In order for a graduate uh, to be considered CCMR ready or college career military ready, uh, they must demonstrate uh, one of the following indicators. And I'll just give you a few examples. They must complete TSI criteria, earn dual enrollment credits, uh, or earn an industry-based certification or graduate with a complete industry-based, I'm sorry, with an IEP or workforce readiness. So these are the very many different pathways that students can earn CCMR indicators. La Jolla ISD excels in CCMR and career military readiness 
surpassing both the regional and state standards. However, there is significant room for improvement in the area of college readiness. A CCMR graduate refers to a high school student who meets the various indicators of preparedness for post-secondary endeavors, including college enrollment, workforce readiness, military enlistment, or other pathways that indicate readiness for both success beyond high school. A CCMR graduate are those who have demonstrated the skills, qualifications necessary to pursue further education, <coughs> enter the workforce, observe, or serve in military upon graduation from high school. La Jolla ISD is currently surpassing the state in the percentage of graduates completing dual credit uh, courses, but the district is facing challenges in the percentage of annual graduates achieving performance on advanced placement or IB assessments. Regarding the Texas Success Initiative, um, La Jolla ISD is currently lagging behind the region state in all TSI initiatives or indicators as noted in this taper report. The particip participation and performance of annual graduates on the college board's SAT, ACT assessment is lower than the region and the state. Should be noted that most students at La Jolla ISD participate in the ACT test administration. <laughs> The average score for the SAT, evidence-based reading and writing and mathematics combined, is 990. That 990 is higher than the region, but it's still just slightly lower than the state uh, average. So our students are performing well on the SAT. Career and technical education at La Jolla continues to excel, surpassing both regional and state performance, as you can see in both the graduates with approved industry-based certifications and the graduates with level one or level two certificates. This, this uh, graph is specifically just for our graduates. The percentage of annual graduates with completed IEP and workforce readiness is higher than both the region and state. And this is our CCMR for our special education students that are graduates. The percentage of annual graduates under an advanced diploma plan and identified as a current special education student is slightly below the region and state. So we have a little room for improvement there. <laughs> attendance rates typically qualify as lagging data. Currently our district's attendance rate lags behind both the region and state averages. It's essential to recognize the noticeable contrast between the attendance rates of 2021 and 2022. The variance can be attributed to changes in attendance procedures necessitated by the COVID-19 pandemic between the two years. That's why you see a very significant difference between 2021 and 2022. La Jolla ISD graduation rates trail behind those of the region and the state. There has been an uptick in the four-year graduation rate. Um, just for a little bit of further knowledge, there is three different types of graduation rates. There is the four-year graduation rate, the five-year, and the six-year graduation rate. The five-year graduation rate is students who failed to complete the course requirements in four years, come back with us for a fifth year and hopefully we can graduate them. If we can't graduate them in five years, then we try again for a sixth year. So we, we help them persist to graduate. Um, the most favorable of those three rates, the better of the three, the four, five, or six is what's used for domain one. However, for domain three in our accountability system, they only look at the federal target, which is the four-year graduation rate. Here's a snapshot of our demographics. I'd like for you guys to turn your attention to the economically disadvantaged percentage that the district uh, works with. Looks like 93.6% of our students are considered economically disadvantaged. Um, out of the, the 20 some thousand students that we work with here in La Jolla, 57.3% are also emergent bilingual. These are our kids that are trying to acquire that second language. 98% of them are Title I, and 80, almost 81% of them are at risk. And then for at risk indicators, 13 different indicators for those kids. So they, they meet one of those indicators, they're considered to be at risk. Please note the enrollment by programs. We have 55.2% of our kids currently enrolled in the bilingual program, 10% in the gifted and talented program, 12% in special education, and in CTE, career and technical education, 80.2%. La Jolla ISD is fortunate to have a significant majority of its teachers with 11 or more years of experience, compromising a remarkable 57.2% of our educators 
have over 11 years of experience. And that's, that's awesome to have in the classroom. We're gonna turn our attention to our PEAMS financial report. Mr. Duque? Yes, ma'am. Can I actually pause for one second before sure. we go into that? Um, board, do you have any questions about the academic data? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for addressing that, Dr. Sorensen. Does anybody have any questions up to now? I mean, this is a really good report, so we appreciate that. Does anybody have any questions now? What is Title I? What Title I is it's typically our students that participate in free and reduced lunch. It's economically disadvantaged. So if you notice that the percentage of Title I and economically disadvantaged kids is almost the same, basically the same, same type of student. What is the policy for attendance, like to count a student present? Do they need an excuse? Do they need to come to a certain time of the day to be counted present? Or how does that work? So the attendance section, and this uh, represents students that are uh, absent, whether they're excused or unexcused, it would still affect us on the ADA or the attendance percentage. Uh, nonetheless, uh, in order for a student to be counted present, they have to be in, present in school for at least two hours, or have been having been re having reported to school, and then having to go to. Uh, there are different uh, reasons as to why they would be counted present, even though they're not at school. For example, they're in a field trip with a certified educator. If they left the school to go to a, a U.S. certified doctor. Right, if they come back that day or the following day with the doctor's excuse, they can still be counted present. But for the most part, they have to be present for at least two hours of instruction to, to have been counted present. Thank you. Any other questions, board? If not, you may proceed, Mr. Duke. Thank you. The PIMS financial data and reporting services ensure transparent accounting and availability of public school funding, summarizing revenue, expenditures, tax rates, and fund balances to aid districts in maximizing allocation for instructional purposes. How, here's how our funding is distributed according to PIMS reporting based on the average daily attendance. Now pause here for a minute so you can review this slide. Okay, we're going to turn our attention now to our campus performance objectives. So the TEA requires that each campus identify board approved campus performance objectives as part of the campus improvement plan. Districts must monitor and publicly report each campus progress towards meeting identified objectives. La Jolla ISD utilizes the goals and performance measure activity to identify, evaluate, and rep report campus performance objectives throughout the district. So we basically provide uh, the board with our goals for this school year and our five-year goal. And we do it in terms of the goals and performance measures document. So what you see there on your screen is how we performed in 2022-2023, what our current 2022-2024 goal is, which is the, the two far right columns on your screen. So those are our goals for this school year. And then we also have our five-year goals that we're mandated to have by Texas Education Code, which is our projected performance, uh, if we continue to grow, how we've been growing over the next couple of years. These are our elementary goals. Currently, these are our middle school goals, and I'd like for you to turn your attention to the goals under that column that says 23, 2024 goal. And these are our high school goals. We have any questions on the goals and performance measures? Can I measures? add something, Mr. Duque? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention that as a board and new superintendent, we will have the opportunity to determine goals and um, goal progress measures for ourselves moving forward. These were the goals and um, progress measures that previous superintendent and previous board had adopted. We will have an opportunity as a board to work on new goals if we so choose, along with progress measures for um, either the district, elementary, middle high, or how we want to proceed. But I just wanted the board to know that we will have an opportunity to collaborate on that moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. We're gonna turn our attention now to the Violent Crimes and Incident Report. Texas statute requires the La Jolla ISD district to publish an annual report on violent crime, criminal incidents at the district. 
the district must report number, rate, and type of incidents. Uh, information concerning school violence prevention and intervention policies and procedures used by the district and findings from the Safe and Drug Free Schools and Communities Act survey. La Jolla ISD is required to report the violent criminal incidents within the district. Please note the number of incidents for indicator number 28 and indicator 30. This represents the violent and criminal incidents reported during the 22-23 school year at La Jolla ISD. La Jolla ISD implements school violence prevention and intervention measures outlined in this slide, including the student code of conduct, school counseling, uh, classroom guidance, positive behavioral interventions and support, which is commonly known as PBIS, um, discipline management training, and anti-bullying and drug prevention campaign, among others. So these are all the strategies that we use here at the district um, in terms of school violence and prevention. Lastly, we're gonna look at our post-secondary performance. Here is how we, here we present the data on the enrollment of La Jolla ISD graduates in institutions of higher learning. Currently, this is also lagging data. So the most current data is the 21-22 graduate data. We have currently 436 students who enrolled in a four-year public university, 388 who enrolled in a two-year public university, Six students enrolled in independent colleges and universities. Uh, total students enrolled, 830. We have 151 students who are not trackable. Not trackable students are graduates who do not have a standard ID number and will, were not found to be matched to an institution of higher education in Texas. Uh, we do have 1,036 students that were not found. These are students that do have a standard ID that were not found at any institution within the state of Texas. Unfortunately, we are only able to track students that are within the state of Texas. Mr. Duke, I have a yes, question. Sir. How long after we lose or that they are, uh, that we untrack them? Is that 12 years? I mean, is, it a, is there a certain amount of time that we, we look for the tracking? Is it like after three years upon graduation? How long is the tracking? I period? believe the tracking starts immediately after the first year, sir. After the first year? Okay, great. Thank you for that. Next, we have our post-secondary performance, um, our higher education student performance GPA in a, in a four-year university. Um, the performance of our La Jolla ISD graduates in post-secondary institutions during their first year after high school graduation is assessed based on the grade point average, the GPA earned at a Texas public four-year and two-year higher education institution. The data reveals that most of the students, the majority of the students at La Jolla ISD graduates attained a GPA below 2.0 in their first year of college with students enrolled in two-year institutions uh, experiencing higher rates of students earning a 2.0 or below. Uh, improving student college preparedness and persistence are identified as areas for growth uh, in this department. Here we have a breakdown of where our students are enrolling uh, once they graduate from La Jolla ISD. If you know, a lot of our students are, are not going, they're not going very far. They're staying close to home. They're, they're enrolling at South Texas, uh, I'm sorry, South Texas College and the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. A lot of our students are staying close to home. We do have some students that are um, accepted to Ivy League schools and they do take off, but for the majority, they're staying in the Rio Grande Valley. And lastly, any questions from the board that we can uh, help clarify? Board members, do we have any questions? Yes, do we have any uh, data that indicates how many students get scholarships? We don't have any data available to you right now, but if you allow us, we can gather that data and have it for you by the next uh, board meeting. I have a question, Mr. President. Go ahead, Dr. Margo. Uh, yes, Mr. Duque, I have a, on tracking information and data. That's all, you track only, um, institutions of higher ed that are public and within the state, correct? That's correct. So it could be that those that are not found could be either out of state in it's an institution or in a private college or university in the state. Yeah. Those would be the untrackable. Yeah. It's possible that those students are enrolled somewhere outside of Texas and we just don't participate with the program that's able to track them. The unfound, Dr. Margo, the unfound would probably be those students that have entered the workforce and have not yet enrolled in a, in a university. Okay, thank you. 
Can I ask you, is our career schools considered college to you all? The RGV College of South Texas or schools like that, career schools that we have plenty of in South Texas that are credible and recognize industry recognized, I mean, that, that um, actually award industry recognized credentials that's mentioned here. Are those students counted? I am not 100% sure, so I, I'm not gonna answer. I, I can't answer that yet right now because I don't know that those career schools are reporting to the state, which is where we're getting some of this data from, right? So again, we can look into it and we can report back to you at the next board meeting, sir. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? I mean, this was a really good report. Dr. Sorensen, would you like to add anything? Um, I think the thing that I wanna add and make um, abundantly clear to the public is that this is a trajectory issue um, across our pre-K to 12 continuum. I know that when we present this data, it appears that we're saying high schools and our post-secondary and, and issues like that where we're lagging. Um, but I, I want to point the board and the public to that a strong foundation starts in pre-K and a strong foundation in literacy, biliteracy, and mathematical fluency, and number sense starts, and then ensures that our kids move through our system once we achieve third grade readiness. And that is something that we'll talk about as a board um, as we think about House Bill 3 and what we wanna send goals around. But at this point, again, our teachers are working very, very hard our administrators are working very, very hard, um, and we have work to do across the pre-K to 12 continuum. And so um, as we set board goals and goal progress measures um, and constraints, it will be a conversation on what do we want to truly focus on in order to move the needle so that our students are post-secondary, college, career, and military ready so when they walk across the stage, they have options. I keep saying this, options, plural, and opportunities, plural. But that doesn't start in ninth grade. That starts before. So, um, and I know, again, I want to just keep saying it. I know everybody's working very hard. Um, and there's some instructional shifts that we could make in order to ensure that our kids are graduating CCR, CCMR ready um, academically as well as on a... Um, career path. Points well mentioned, and thank you for that, Dr. Sorensen. Uh, Mr. Munoz, and Mr. Duca, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, we just appreciate the support. Uh, and uh, as we move forward, as Dr. Science, uh, Dr. Sorensen said, right, we do have some plans to address those areas of deficiency. As a district, when we get this data, we always uh, unpack the data. We do a comprehensive analysis identify areas of concerns, and then put action plans to address it. So moving forward, I know Dr. Sorensen has brought uh, some ideas as to how we can go about uh, addressing the, the concerns that we do have. Uh, like Dr. Sorensen mentioned, the issues that we have at the high school started in pre-K. So we wanna make sure that we emphasize early childhood education, both in reading and math, so that as we move forward, uh, we are able to address those areas of concern. Thank you. Uh, seeing that there's nothing else, uh, public comment is now closed. It is 7.30. We have other presentations. Yes. Okay. Um, so and how we have, um, oh, we do. What other presentations do we have? I apologize. Calendar rollout. Yeah. I, oh, I'm sorry. Go that's ahead. okay. That's okay. So um, public comment, I mean, the, uh, the public hearing is now closed as reference 7.30. Uh, now I have number, agenda item number seven, which is the superintendent's report and announcement. Uh, the following items are on the agenda is item number seven, superintendent's report and announcement. Dr. Sorensen, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I don't have a clicker, so I will assume that somebody's driving for me. Thank you. Um, so I would like to just briefly um, review the proposed instructional calendar for 24-25 with the board and the public. So next slide, please. Okay, thank you so much. 
Um, so this is our current instructional calendar um, for 23-24, and you'll notice that the instructional days are a total of 170, um, as well as we have something called TEP days in the district, um, which are flexible um, professional learning days, um, and then the rest of the days are laid out. Um, I won't belabor this calendar or, or take public time as this is the calendar that we're currently living under um, as a district. The, candle that, the calendar that I'm proposing for the 24-25 um, increases the number of instructional days, um, also provides preparation days and six professional learning days to lean into professional learning um, for our teachers and staff so that we can continue to move the needle on um, student outcomes. Um, days of holidays are present, um, and those are noted on the calendar. The six grading periods um, remain, and start and end dates are also present. Um, at town hall meetings um, for teachers and for community, I walked the community and teachers through the entire calendar in order to really identify that while the purpose of the calendar is to increase student outcomes and to provide our students with more instructional days and instructional minutes, we were also very thoughtful about our adults and our teachers and our staff that show up um, every single day and work very hard that breaks and holidays and bad weather days were accounted for in terms of um, opportunities where we work really, really hard for a couple of weeks, and then there's an opportunity for a day off. Um, and so you'll note those days in gray and green um, on the calendar. The lavender days are the new proposed professional learning days that we are proposing to add um, for the staff. Next. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. Our purpose of the new calendar ultimately is to have a student-focused calendar with academic outcomes at the forefront. It increases instructional minutes by 3,600 minutes, um, increasing instructional days by eight, and increasing professional learning days by six. Next slide. The professional learning days for designated staff are listed there for the public and for the board to note. And the focus of the professional de development while the exact topics have not yet been determined yet because I want to hear from our teachers and I want to hear from our principals as to what they want to learn, where they feel like they need um, additional supports in terms of instructional practices. The buckets of which um, I have noted here is where our focus will be. I also did want to note that for those required to attend these additional professional learning days, we will be compensating um, $300 per day for certified professionals. If we make the decision moving forward um, that um, ancillary staff would come in or teachers aides or things like that, we would take a average of that salary and they would be compensated. We have not yet finalized which staff will need to come in, but we have gotten a lot of feedback um, in terms of um, all certified educators and there has been um, some pretty intense conversation about special education aides or instructional aides who help in the classroom, our pre-K assistants, in order to have them be instructionally sound as we ask them to support in the classroom. Thank you. I'm also proposing that we adopt an ADSY calendar, A-D-S-Y, which is an additional days school year. Um, and I am proposing that we add 20 days of instruction in June. Um, House Bill 3 by the Texas legislature allows us to do this. Um, and so again, the point being more instructional time, more focus on instructional days for students so that we can begin to close gaps and accelerate learning for all students across the district. Um, and again, noting elementary school teachers will be compensated at the rate that is established for summer school, as these will not be days that are added to their contract. We are going to give our elementary school teachers the opportunity to opt out of this. Um, so we will not be adding it to the contract, but they will be compensated at a rate that we establish for summer school and making it enticing for teachers to want to do this ADSI calendar. 
So again, the why, I always want to ground us in the why. Why am I proposing the calendar? Um, and what you'll note here is that summer learning loss has been shown to create a gap of up to three grade levels for low income students. Mr. Duque just presented a report on who our demographics are. And so we want to ensure that we are not enhancing learning loss by providing as much time out of the classroom and a much, as much time away from instruction. We know that our students across the nation, including La Jolla ISD, are struggling to recover academically after the pandemic. And so we wanna make sure that not only are we closing the gaps exacerbated by the pandemic, but also accelerating so that all kids are ready for college career and military readiness. Again, as the data just showed, we have work to do. So the additional 20 ADSI days, um, I'm going to keep saying this over and over again, and I said this in every single town hall, is that in my mind, these days are mandatory. And I'm going to have conversations with educators and families and parents, um, community members, that the why around for pre-K to five, I view these days as mandatory. But I do want to know that ADSI is not compulsory. And it, and is highly recommended, meaning I cannot make it law, I cannot penalize, so it is not compulsory, but highly recommended for all students and families. Now I know that I will have a family, two or three, who make decisions to make other decisions for their families, and we will work with those families um, to try to convince them to come to summer school because we want these ADSI days to be full of enrichment and learning and engaging activities. We want to lean into reading and math and we want to lean into science and social studies and STEM and field trips and engaging activities that enrich them like the fine arts um, and provide opportunities for our kids to grow in the elementary, not just a drill and kill um, summer program where kids are just sitting there in front of a computer for summer programming. We want to create a new summer programming that is enticing for families. I did also want to note um, that my role and responsibility as a superintendent is to not only be instructionally sound, but fiscally proactive. And so if the days are added to the calendar, the district can earn up to $3 million for participation, for student participation and transportation for the adoption of the ATSI calendar measured through ADA, which is average daily attendance. And so I know there has been some concern that the superintendent is just doing this to earn money and to get money in the district. And this superintendent will say, absolutely, it is a and for me. The first reason that I'm choosing to propose this calendar is for the data that Mr. Duque and Mr. Munoz just presented. The second reason is to keep our students and families engaged throughout the year so that we reduce learning loss and try to combat it and accelerate student learning. So again, all students graduate CCMR prepared. And thirdly, at the last board meeting, this board just approved an over $5 million expenditure for summer school. If we have the opportunity to earn $3 million back, up to $3 million um, for participation, it's my responsibility as the superintendent to propose ideas that are revenue generating to bring funds into the district. Next slide. So what are the implications for middle and high schools for this calendar? is that middle and high schools will run along the same calendar and their programming requirements will be during those 20 days. Um, but again, we have an opportunity to announce what that summer programming is, looks like once data is analyzed and we address acceleration opportunities and learning gap recovery for our middle school and high schoolers. Um, I have a, a, a lot of middle school principals and some teachers that have said, can you make it mandatory for sixth grade? Because those transition years can be very difficult. So again, it's our opportunity to create something new, um, innovative and um, gap closing and accelerating. 
And again, want to just note that middle school and high school teachers, just like elementary school teachers, will be compensated at the summer school rate for summer work. Um, so we did do some survey data that I wanted to make public. Um, is we had 335 parent and community responses, 188 teacher and staff responses. I did want to note that um, we asked four questions. I took two um, in order to um, just add these to the presentation. One of the questions was the 2024-25 proposed calendar will meet the needs of my students. And you see that 87.7% of our teachers and staff agree. Um, you'll also see that 50.1% of our parents and community members agree, which signals to me as a superintendent that we have more work to do to bring our parents and community members into the conversation around the why. We also have to start having conversations with parents as to where their children are currently academically so that it becomes personal earlier. We need to have the conversations about how approaches, while we will take the points for accountability, isn't grade level progress. So we need to start having those individual conversations with parents and community members so that folks truly understand the why. The other question that I put up here and that I thought was really relevant to share both with the board and the public um, is the distribution of breaks and holidays is satisfactory and meets the needs of my family. 84.6% of our teachers and staff agree and 60.9% of parents and community members agree. So those were just two of the four questions um, that I wanted to make public here. Um, and I will pause here, questions from the board. Board members, do we have any questions for Dr. Sorensen? No questions? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, you, you call it up, but um, then I'll introduce our police chief. Okay. Um, so was that able to cover PK3 and 4 oh, update? Oh, I'm so sorry. No, that's me. Okay. So next item is the PK3 and PK4 update, Dr. Sorensen. Everyone, please forgive me. I am like super sick. So I'm muddling through. Um, so I'm thrilled to share some exciting news from La Jolla ISD. As we look ahead to the 24-25 school year, I am proud to confirm that we will be continuing to offer our pre-K and 3K, pre-K-4 programs here in La Jolla ISD. Enrollment for pre-K for the upcoming school year will open on April 1st, continuing an incredible journey for our youngest learners. At La Jolla ISD, we believe in providing the best possible start for our children. And what a better way to do that by welcoming them into our family from the very beginning, becoming members of the La Jolla ISD and our district. We are committed to ensuring that every child receives the care, the support, the high quality education, the high quality instruction that is age and grade appropriate that they deserve from the start from La Jolla ISD. It is important to note that we will not be discontinuing the pre-K program at La Jolla ISD. And I wanna keep saying that out loud because I know that there was conversation about whether La Jolla ISD was going to continue these programs. We will. We deeply value our community and strive to be of help and service to all of our families. So I implore that together, let's continue to nurture and empower our youngest learners for success. I thank you for your support as we continue this exciting journey together. And we look forward to all of our families registering on April 1st. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. Would you like to go ahead and introduce our next speaker? I would like to call up Chief Sanchez to talk about our emergency operations plan. Good evening, uh, Mr. Board President Alvarez, Dr. Sorensen, uh, school. Superintendent of Schools, uh, esteemed board members, administration, and community. Actually, move this this way. I am pleased to share an important update regarding the safety protocol at La Jolla ISD. We want to, ensure, to reassure you that our district is in good standings with the state in terms of safety compliance. I am proud to report that all monthly safety drills are being conducted constantly and rigorously across our schools. These drills are an essential part of our ongoing efforts to ensure preparedness and uh, responsiveness 
in any emergency situation. As we continue to prioritize the well-being of our students, staff, and community, I want to emphasize that safety remains at the forefront of all of our decisions. Every trip, event, initiative is carefully planned with the safety and security of our school community in mind. We are committed to maintain a safe and nurturing learning environment where every individual feels secure and supported. Your trust and partnership are invaluable as we work together to uphold the highest standards of our safety. Thank you, thank you, Chief. Um, I want to um, thank the cabinet, um, the team um, of the chief. I'm getting to you next. Um, the cabinet members um, for ensuring that quickly we were in compliance with the state. Um, so I really want to thank the hard work of the team who um, made sure that safety was at the forefront of our decision making and to ensure that our campuses are in compliance with their safety drills. So I just wanted to note that for the public, that we are in compliance with the state and that our campuses are monthly doing the required drills as outlined by the state. So thank you for your leadership, Chief. Thank you, Doctor. Am I excuse? I'm sorry, I'm not in court, sorry. Thank you, Chief. Dr. Sorensen, next speaker. So with that being said, I would like to introduce David Torres. David, you wanna come up? Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to David Lee Torres, the La Jolla ISD Police Department Emergency Management Coordinator. This is an appointment, a reassignment that I have made um, in result um, of us having a vacancy in that particular spot. And so I have reassigned Mr. Torres um, to serve in this role as the Emergency Management Coordinator. David Torres completed his undergraduate studies at Texas A&M University Fighting Texas Aggie class of 2012. I think that we have an Aggie on the board. With a bachelor's in sociology and a minor in psychology, upon completion of his undergraduate degree, he obtained his master's degree in forensic psychology from the Chicago St School of Professional Psychology. After obtaining his master's degree, he began working for La Jolla ISD Police Department as their first offender specialist and obtained a licensed chemical dependency counselor credential. David and his wife, Jessica, who is an agricultural science teacher at James Nicky Rowe High School, have, two, have a two-year-old son named David James Torres. They call him DJ. During his time working with La Jolla ISD Police Department, he developed and built the first offender program into a successful and revolutionary diver, diversion program, helping at-risk population for La Jolla ISD and those across the Rio Grande Valley and state. David expanded his knowledge and training into various aspects of responsibilities for La Jolla ISD Police Department, fully immersing himself into the discipline of school safety and emergency management. David continues through his ninth year at La Jolla ISD, expanding his knowledge on these subjects and building a network of community partners and agency. Mr. Torres continues to strive to apply all of his knowledge base to ensure the safety and well being of students, staff, and the community that make up La Jolla ISD, ensuring that, in, that educational excellent, excellence is the right of every student. So I'd like to announce him to the community as well as welcome him um, in front of the board to his new role. Congratulations. Thank you. Got a fellow Aggie right there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Torres. I have one more personnel announcement. Um, so, beginning on Tuesday, April 2nd, um, Joseph Nigella will assume the role of Chief of Staff for La Jolla ISD, bringing with him over 20 years of teaching and leading experience. Grounded in a firm commitment to equity and excellence, Mr. Dangela is dedicated to ensuring every child's right to a high quality education. His leadership has a strong track record of lowering access barriers for students, improving student achievement outcomes, and strengthening organizational capacity to better support campuses and stakeholders. Mr. Nigella has served in a range of leadership positions in the Fort Worth Independent School District over the last 20 years. In addition to his 10 years in the classroom, he served as a content specialist, director of social studies, 
District Lead Administrator of Summer Learning and Acceleration Programs, Executive Director of Social Studies and Curriculum Supports, and a Cabinet Leader within the Division of Academics. Most recently, he was Director of K-12 Humanities. Mr. Nigella began his career in education, teaching grades six through eight social studies and English at St. Andrews, the Apostle School in Clifton, New Jersey, and is an eight-year veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Mr. Nigella received his bachelor's degree in political science from Te Texas Christian University, where he met his loving wife of 20 years and with whom he has a teenage daughter. He holds a master's degree in education and teaching with educational leadership certification from the University of Texas at Arlington. Mr. Nigella is honored and humbled to have the opportunity to join the La Jolla ISD family and is eager to serve the community as chief of staff. Mr. Nigella is not here this evening because he is currently preparing to move, um, but I wanted the staff to know and the public to know and the board to know that he will be joining us on Tuesday, April 2nd in the new role of chief of staff. We look forward to it. We look forward to meeting him, Dr. Sorensen. Thank you. Next item will be the status and update of contractor pay applications. Dr. Sorensen. Mr. Garcia, would you like to come up as well? Um, so this is a discussion item that we just wanted to, again, put before the board and the public um, so that everyone is aware that we are catching up um, from previous board meetings in terms of payment for um, past contracts and contractual agreements that we have um, been in for the past couple of years, year, two years. Two years. Um, and so again, I just wanted the public to be aware and the board to be aware that these are the payments that have been processed um, in the time here. Mr. Garcia, would you like to add anything for the board? No, good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Sorensen, esteemed board members, uh, colleagues, and community. Again, we appreciate you taking this step and ensuring that we do our due diligence when we're also conducting our business through contracts, because now it'll make facilitate once we do our checks and balances, we will make sure that payments are done appropriately. I know in the past couple of months with the transition, Dr. Sorensen has been inundated with phone calls, you know, and, and some get a little... Uh, difficult, but with this, we've already assured all our contracted individuals that we will proceed with payment no later than probably by the end of tomorrow, if not early on next week. So we do appreciate your support for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate your work on this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And that concludes the superintendent's update. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. At this time, we have we are going into a closed session under section 551.071. In 551.074, it is exactly 8.03 p.m.
Back from closed session, and the time is 10.30. Next on the agenda is agenda item number 10. The agenda item 10 is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item is uh, agenda item number 11. Action and discussion items consider adoption of board policy be local presented by Dr. Marcy Sorensen. Um, I don't have anything to present except for that I am asking the board to adopt board policy BE local. Do I have a motion? I move to approve item number one. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? See that there's no oppose, it's passed. Motion carries. Okay, what's the next one? Dr. Sorensen, consider the adoption of policy CH local? Yes, I would request that the board consider the adoption of board policy CH local. Do I have a second? Correction, do I have a motion? I have, I'll make the motion to approve item number two, adoption of board policy CH local. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We have unanimous motion carries. Number three, approval strategy support for La Jolla ISD to Region 1. I would again request the approval of the board to enter into a contract with Region 1 for strategic planning support for La Jolla ISD. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the, the strategic planning support for La Jolla ISD to Region 1. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing that there's none, motion carries. Number four, discussion of investments, investment earnings as of December 31st, 2023. <coughs> Mr. Presenter. Garza will come up. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Sorensen. As per government code 2256.023, I'll be presenting the quarterly investments and investment earnings report as of December 31st, 2023. And in your agenda on page 329, this page reflects a listing of investments and represents the investment position of La Jolla SD as of December 31st. The district had a total investment of $142,762,855, of which 85.84% is in the general fund and the amount of $122,548,875. <coughs> if you move on to page 334, this page reflects the investment earnings for the district. As of December 31st, the district had a total investment earnings in the amount of $2,289,453, of which 89.7% was earned in the general fund in the amount of $2,053,842. The bottom portion of that same page reflects the interest rates. The rates are fair, still favorable to the district, like always for the betterment of the district. We do the best we can to capture the best rate available to maximize earnings for the district. And that concludes my, my report. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Garza? Seeing that there's none, do I have a motion? I move to approve item number four, discussion of investments, investment earnings as of December 31, 2023. Do I have a second? I second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing that there's none, we have a unanimous vote. It passes. Approval of the 2024-2025 school calendar year. I would ask Mr. Munoz to come up, please. So good evening, uh, Mr. Board President, uh, Madam Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen of the board and community. Uh, before you is the item to go ahead and approve the district instructional calendar for the 24-25 school year, as Dr. Sorensen presented during her superintendent's uh, update. Uh, our proposed calendar is increasing instructional minutes by 3,600 3, minutes. It's increasing our instructional days, and it's increasing our professional days. We want to leverage 
our calendar to improve uh, student performance and student outcomes. So administration uh, recommends approval. Thank you, Ms. Munoz. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the 2024-25 school calendar. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All of those in fa favor signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed? Seeing that there's no opposition, motion carries. Number six, approval of La Jolla ISD Police Department racial profile report for 2023. Mr. Sanchez. Chief. Cap chief, Captain. I mean, Chief, sorry. Any questions? That's a yearly uh, reporting that we have to do to the state uh, based on the quarter code procedures on traffic stops and documenting of, of consent to searches, which we, we don't have any. Uh, we approximately last year we had a uh, total of five traffic stops so pretty much it's that simple we're already turned it into the state <clears throat> excuse me any questions on that any questions from any of the board members chief do i have a motion i move to approve item number six approval of la jolla isd po uh, police department racial profile report for 2023 do i have a second i second the motion all in favor aye, aye. aye. All opposed, signify by saying no. no. No opposition, motion carries. Next item would be a calendar um, items A through G. I'm gonna go ahead and read through them unless you'd like for me to have you, Dr. Sorensen. Oh no, please, board reading? president. Okay, great. Okay, so again, next items on the agenda are calendar items A through G. Uh, following A would be March 29, 2024, Easter holiday, April 1st, 2024, wellness day off, April 11, 2024, regular board meeting. April 24, 2024, regular board meeting. May 9, 2024, regular board meeting. May 22nd, 2024, regular board meeting. May 25th, 2024, La Jolla ISD commencement exercises, which will be held at the Bird Ogden Arena. So as I'm glad to see that. Agenda item 13, school board members and superintendent remarks. At this time, Superintendent Dr. Sorsen, would you like to make any remarks? Um, my only remark is to thank the board for their support of the 2024-25 school calendar. Um, we're very excited to move forward with a new calendar that is student focused, as well as supportive of our staff. So I wanna thank the board for that. I also would like to thank all of our staff and faculty members who supported our students during the recognition ceremony. Um, that takes a lot of really hard work. And so I wanna recognize our staff for their hard work. And lastly, um, students and families, um, your work and dedication shows every single day as I show up in schools and do school visits. So again, I wanna recognize the excellence that exists in La Jolla ISD with our students and families and educators. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything to add before we close? With that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move to adjourn this meeting at 10.38 p.m. Do I, have a I second? second the motion. Okay. All in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Seeing that there's no opposition, motion carries. We are adjourned.